I chain smoke and I say fuck a lot. But I accept myself for the way I am. I accept you too. Viewer discretion advised. Guardy Lou. An act of discarding waste or some other substance from a height. Guardy Lou was used by people in medieval Scotland to warn passersby of waste about to be thrown from a window into the street below. Term was still in use as late as the 1930s and 1940s when many people had no indoor toilets. I've been pretty busy, but I do have a few videos in the works. Some are longer. And not to make myself out to be a victim, but I have some stuff going on that I need to fix and work on. So I'm trying to do that also. But I wanted to get out a video, and I was kind of inspired by this. I won't get into specifics right now, but there are many times you look at something that was thought to be an infectious disease, and later on, it proves to be either a nutritional deficiency or some kind of environmental toxin. There's another point of view, is what I'm saying. And I don't know if you ever heard of the other point of view from the bubonic plague, but there is one. And since Dr. Treving is supposed to come back here next month, and he is working on his book, Goodbye Germ Theory, the sequel, part two, I was inspired by this. During the time of the so-called bubonic plague, the living conditions in France and most areas of Europe were far from ideal for the bulk of citizens. There was no sanitation in larger, more congested areas of city life where people crammed together in small living quarters would dump their feces and urine onto the streets. The most popular food of the average commoner was lard pie. You read that correctly. That's the same as fat pie. These fat pies were usually mixed with potatoes and other heavy starches. Another contribution to the generalized poisoning of Europe at that time was cooking with lead utensils. You can only imagine how a diet of this nature, prepared with lead utensils, would clog up the circulatory system with accumulated fat and poisons. Was there any doubt that these people would develop large, painful bubose glands? Hence the bubonic plague. The treatment for the bubonic plague was similar to the intent of modern-day chemotherapy, i.e., cut out what appears to be the bad parts. Some people had their glands removed from their armpits and groin. Now, as you are most likely aware, the glands of the body belong to the lymphatic system. This system cleanses the blood with the glands around the neck, armpit, and groin acting as filters. These people lived in highly toxic circumstances most of their lives, and now their swollen and overworked blood filters were being removed. Not too smart, but then again, it's medicine. Medical philosophy has not changed much in 500 years centering itself around either cutting something out or drugging something out. The party line on the bubonic plague, which is hysterically still taught as such, is that rats carried fleas which carried microbes that created the disease. That is total nonsense. The bubonic plague is spread by infected fleas that live on the backs of rats. The rats stow away on ships and live within close proximity to humans. Stow away rats. Where have I heard that before? So when the ships carry the infected rats to new cities, the disease inevitably follows. The rats eventually die, and the fleas that actually carry the disease search for new hosts and jump on humans. When the flea bites a human, the bacterium enters the body and rapidly spreads to the human's lymphatic system and multiplies. The infected person may not show any symptoms for one to seven days after getting bitten, but they'll eventually develop a fever, chills, vomiting, and eventually the trademark appearance of smooth, painful, painful buboes developing out of swelled up lymph glands around the groin, armpits, and the neck. External sanitation improved by leaps and bounds in the turn of the 20th century. This is why all statistical research shows major infectious disease rates declining rapidly around 1910. But the war on germs was seen to be a worthwhile one, most likely due to a mixture of human superstition and greed. Out of this war was born the oppressive medical cartel we are all struggling with today. It's time we educate the people as to the truth and real purpose of these microbes and end this fictional war. It is high time to say goodbye germ theory. <laughs> Fucking stoned. I got
cool. I got it. 